can't take this guy seriously. I can't. You know, it, we're in 2019, we have someone who's freaking out about, this is your brain on drugs. You like, do you guys remember when you were in like middle school, at least for me, they had that commercial that they would play of like an egg? This is your brain, and then they would crack it into frying pans and it'd be like, this is your brain on drugs. Don't do marijuana. I'm gonna tell you the source I'm quoting in just a moment, but pretend for a moment you don't know the source and I don't know the source. Pretend you're just encountering this as a scrap of text floating around the internet with no idea what kind of authority it comes from. And pretend there are no other sources available to allow me to prove to you that Jacqueline Glenn is wrong, that Jacqueline Glenn has been lying, that in fact marijuana does cause brain damage. What, what would you make? What would you make of this, this claim? I think there's something about the very structure and nature of the information being presented here. There's something, something about it that demands to be taken seriously. Quote, our study demonstrates a pattern of gray matter volume changes in a group of regular cannabis users compared with a group of occasional ones. Just an interesting note, everyone who participated in the study was age 19 to age 29. So there were no effects on the brain here of old age or other cumulative habits over many years. Regular users exhibit a decrease in gray matter volume in the medial temporal cortex, temporal pole, parahippocampal gyrus, left insula, and orbitofrontal context, cortex. <laughs> I'm not a brain surgeon, I'm not. Let me ask you in the audience, if I hadn't struggled to pronounce the different parts of the human brain there, do you think any of you would have just felt comfortable with marijuana causing brain damage, with marijuana, marijuana causing the loss of brain matter in, in just some parts of the brain and not others? Was there anyone in the audience who was sitting there thinking, hmm, okay, the, the temporal cortex, temporal pole, that I can live with, that's no problem, but wait a minute, it causes brain damage also in the orbitofrontal cortex. Okay, forget it. I'm out. Okay, now now I'm going to take this seriously, guys. Now I'm going to quit smoking marijuana. Before, the first four or five parts of the brain you mentioned being damaged by marijuana, that, that I was cool with, but not that last cortex. That was one cortex too many. That was a bridge too far. I, I don't see it. I mean, there are people who decide to smoke cigarettes and they feel a disconnect like, well, that does damage to my lungs, but somehow it doesn't do damage to me. Like as if who I am and my lungs are two really separable things. They drink alcohol and they think it just damages their kidney and their liver and they say they're comfortable with whatever happens to their kidney and liver as if, you know, my kidney and my liver, that's not who I really am, that's not really me. Your brain is, your brain is who you really are, bro. <laughs> There's no way anyone could say they're at peace with just some parts of their brain being horribly damaged, horribly impaired by, uh, by marijuana, having structural changes to their brain. I don't think anyone's comfortable with any one of these locations of the brain being damaged by marijuana. I, maybe I'm wrong. Send me email, guys. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for that to come in. All right, so we continue here. These changes strongly correlate with the monthly frequency of cannabis use in the three months before inclusion in the study. Specifically, significant gray matter atrophy can occur either with a heavy cannabis consumption independent of the age of first use or with recreational consumption that started during adolescence before the age of 18. Neuropsychopharmacology, come on, that's a journal. Nobody can even spell the title. It's a terrible name for a journal. <laughs> How are you going to sell any copies on newsstands with a title like that? Yeah, well, it's a respectable peer-reviewed journal. That's what I was quoting before. And uh, that's what I'm interested in quoting again. Our findings corroborate several animal studies, adding evidence that the duration of exposure to cannabis is indeed associated with localized volume reduction in regions rich in CB1 receptors, correlating with the amount of cannabis used. Let me just, let me just emphasize here. <clears throat> volume, volume. <laughs> Doesn't mean doesn't mean they're turning down the volume on the, in the brain. It's not it's not about sound here. Okay, localized volume reduction. That's talking about the actual shrinkage of lobes of the brain. Okay, the loss of gray matter being visible as shrinking hemispheres of the brain. Shall we say? Continue our quotation here. The progression of 
a long-term exposure to drugs toward the development of substance use disorders and addictive behaviors is often associated with deficits in decision-making. In this regard, it has been demonstrated that substance-dependent individuals and patients with VMPFC lesions exhibit similar behaviors that lead them to make similar decisions in real life, preferring choices that bring immediate benefits, even if coupled with negative consequences. Right, let's just pause. So what they're saying here is the type of brain damage they have proven, proven marijuana to cause, it doesn't just show up in a brain scan on a computer screen down at the hospital. It's also evident in changes in human behavior in the types of decisions people make. This is a short clip from a 17 minute long video that provides much more detailed evidence about which parts of the brain are damaged in what way and the nature of the compelling scientific evidence for why and how we know this is, along with some reflections on what it means to have a skeptical attitude. If you just search within this channel, you're going to find many videos bringing together evidence from many many scientific sources on this crucially important issue. And now ask yourself, why is it that Jacqueline Glenn, on her side of the argument, has no scientific sources at all? She only has lies, insults, and innuendo. I mean, really, people like to disrespect my crew, but the fact is that you know my name and I don't know you.